Good morning. This is Brenda Cameron's ministry coming to you live from Dream City Church in at the Glendale campus. We will be doing lesson three of the Blended Families uh, workbook. It's called Celebrate Your Difference and Who's Normal is Normal. And here's Larry. Okay, make sure the microphone is on. There we go. All right, yeah, like uh, Carol said, this is uh, lesson three of, of 12. It's a 12 week uh, semester. And this is celebrate your differences. And what I like to call it is who's normal is normal. So let's get started here. Uh, last week, uh, well, before I get started, I just want to apologize in advance for coughing a lot. Uh, this is week three, week one. I was just coming down with a sinus infection last week. I was just kind of coming off all the meds and I'm still got a cough. So that's not a lot I can control right at the moment. So anyway, last week we talked about what is a blended family. And one of those things is the fact that every marriage is a blending of two families and everything that you've experienced throughout your life you know everything your parents taught you everything you learned in school uh, everything you've experienced since getting out of school all that creates what we call your normal and everybody has one and very, very few instances, <coughs> sorry, <clears throat> very few instances are anybody's normals the same. Even identical twins, eventually they end up living some different things. So uh, anyway, so every, everybody has a, what we call a normal and that's just their, the sum total of their life experience uh, things that they've done, things that have happened to them, things they've been taught, things they've learned on their own, and all that. So <clears throat> when two people get married, well, they're bringing those two normals together. And the trick to marriage is trying to figure out how to put those two normals together <laughs> because they're very different. And in some cases, extremely different. Uh, just a real quick example, uh, Carol's ex was basically from Texas. She was from New England. They're both American, but that's two very different cultures. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. She grew up on the beach, a lot of people out there fishing and doing that kind of stuff, you know, you know, a lot of fishermen and things like that. Tourism was a big deal where she was, but uh, the other guy was from Texas, you know, all the food's different. He was in the military and so he moved around a lot. But when you try to put those two normals together, there's gonna to be a lot of challenges. So that's that's what we're gonna to try to deal with today is some of those challenges of figuring out who's, who's normal who's normal. Well, also um, we have different cultures coming together, which is one of the blending. Mm -hmm. And we know that part's not easy to do mm -hmm. either. So yes, uh, different cultures have different upbringing of what their normal is, and that it, uh, it's it's difficult sometimes. Yeah, and you know one of those things you know when you're talking about cultures, there's a lot of different cultures even in the same country. Oh, yeah. And then you know, if you talk different countries, now that's that's a whole different thing but even in the same country different areas of the country are different cultures and that can be a challenge so the thing we need to understand is individual differences between spouses and differences with extended family everyone is unique and we look at uh, Psalm 139 14 <clears throat> I will praise you for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. So it's 
important, one of the main takeaways of this lesson is that each and every one of us is a child of God. We're created in his image. We're very valuable to him and, and we're unique. No two people are alike. So you're created in his image. <laughs> You need to turn your volume off. <laughs> well, I don't know how to do it. They changed it on this side. <laughs> Only had the phone two years. Anyway, uh, I think it's okay now. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, Cheryl's trying to check some of the stats. Yeah, we have a lot of people listening at home, and we are happy that you're home listening. But we sure would love to have you in the classroom because your discussion here is just as important to the teaching for, for others to learn too. Right. So can you make an effort to maybe come <laughs> in one of these Sundays soon? Thank you. <laughs> yes, we would appreciate that. So understand that you are created in God's image. You are valuable but you are unique and you're not like anybody else. So again, who's normal is normal, right? You have a normal, they have a normal, but when you get married, it's a matter of taking, basically setting aside your normals and creating a God-like, a Christ-like normal. And a, a new our normal. It right. should be what the both of you decide your normal is going to be. Not because I did it, that's the right way. Yours is not. Right. Uh, another little example. Uh, a chef was married and he was getting very frustrated when his wife was trying to chop carrots. And I mean, he's a chef. He does this for a living, right? He's in there, he just... Trying to show her his way. So, and she was trying to do it, and it was just struggling and struggling, and he's like, here, let me show you how to do this. And so he takes the knife away from her, and here, like this, you know. Well, ultimately, he finally figured out he's right-handed, she's left-handed. <laughs> and he was trying to force her to do it the yeah. opposite of her normal way of doing it. His way. His way, yeah. right? So little things like that, just the fact that somebody's right-handed or somebody's left-handed, just because that's the way you do it, doesn't mean it's the right way, okay? And what we've found over the years is most people seem to think their normal is the right normal. Absolutely. Now, when we're talking whose normal is normal, it's a matter of basically preferences, this is what you've learned. This is how you've learned to do it. So it just seems like this is the way to do it. I mean, it's like, I've never done it any other way, <laughs> right? But <coughs> when, when two people are trying to put some things together, it's like, take the time to think about this stuff, talk about this stuff. I mean, that's what marriage is. You got all these years, hopefully, to spend together. Talk about this stuff. Who's, you know, compare notes whose way really is a better way. It may not be right or wrong. And, that, and that's the big thing here. Whose normal is normal. It's not a matter of right and wrong. If I got an apple in one hand and an orange in the other, and I say, which one is right? It's not the right question. It's a matter of which do you like better, <laughs> right? You got two different kinds of fruit. They're just different. It's not a matter of right and wrong. And that's what we want people to understand when it comes to trying to put a marriage together. It's not about who's right and who's wrong. It's who can, whose way is closer to God's way. You guys have been married quite a while. You had some challenges. Is there any of this that brings a bell to you? Is there anything you'd like to share with somebody that might be listening that has different cultures? that they're struggling with something? 
that's like a loaded question I know. for us. <laughs> but at any time, if you think of something like that, you would, you know, just let Larry know you want to say something, that's the mic, and you guys too. If you guys have something you want to add, just let me know and we'll get you the mic. Because people at home, there's all different situations, and this is training to them. You know, we're trying to educate people how to blend in, in many different ways. Um, so anytime, please, if you feel you need to say something, please do, okay? Yeah, we're all for it. Yep. Yeah. Well, you wondered when Dr. Larry was saying to you, thank you for this opportunity. When Dr. Larry was speaking, the word that dropped in my spirit and what we have, I think, continued to work on is what way brings balance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, each family is different. My family is different from his family. It doesn't mean my family is right, his is wrong, or his is right, mine is wrong. It's just like whatever decision we make, what brings balance to our marriage. True. So yeah. that's what came to oh, me. Oh, yeah. yeah. Very and good. See, it's, you know, we have our, our normals, but, you know, for the most part, it's sort of fleshy, you know, more often than not. But it's trying to take everything we know along with the Word of God and make it make us look like one flesh that's Christ-like okay that's the goal uh, and for most people it takes their whole marriage to even get a little close to that right because you know let's face it we're kind of selfish we like to do things our way you know it's it's our normal we like to do it our way and and some yeah. never get it. And some just, some just you know, keep just, going there. Well, you go your way, I'll go mine. Yeah. And so that's why there's so many divorces. That's People right. can't give up their normal. That's right. right. Now. They don't want the conflict, Larry. <clears throat> well, yeah, which is what I was. I was like, whatever I got to do to not have a conflict. Right. What do you want to do? Yeah. Okay. Let's do that. <laughs> and. We could, I, I was able to do that for 23 and something years, yep. and then I couldn't do it anymore. Right. But we look at it, at this. When God brings two people together, they will complement each other's differences because God's doing this. Mm -hmm. However, if you married without consulting God, there is a good chance that you, in your flesh, picked the wrong one. However, even if you did pick the wrong one and you're married now, if you give your life over to Christ, God can redeem that. Mm -hmm. And now you can start working on becoming more Christ-like in your marriage and be, be, be one and of one accord, of one mind, which is the mind of Christ. And he can still use that marriage for his glory. Mm -hmm. So... Obviously, premarital counseling is extremely important, so you have an opportunity to discover some of the differences between you and your spouse before you enter into a covenant with them. So, <coughs> one, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> one of those things we do in our premarital is ask a whole lot of questions because we want to know why, why do you want to marry this person and why now? And a whole bunch of other questions along with those. But why do you think this is the right person? Have you talked about this? Have you talked about that? Who gets to keep the pets? <laughs> Who gets to keep the friends? You know, all these kind of things. And, uh, you know, did anybody promise to take care of their parents yep. in their old age? You know, um, that, that can be a big issue maker, right? Yeah, we, we had somebody that actually had agreed upon that. And then when the time came, said, no, I'm not in on that. Well, yeah, they were going to get married. They dated for two years, and he was a pastor. Yeah, and then they ended up calling it to off. to take care of his parents, and <clears throat> she knew that. Mm -hmm. And two weeks before the wedding, she gave him an ultimatum. Yeah. You either pick me and let your parents go, or we're not getting married. He didn't pick her. No. <laughs> so, God wanted to. so it's, and one of the 
funnier ones was the the vet the yeah. veterinarian right who had four or five pets and you know they all slept in the bed with her right and he's like okay so what are these pets going to do after we get married yeah, we the, we had the last. <laughs> they hadn't really talked about that last yet. premarital session <coughs> a week before they were getting married, and so the topic came up about the pets. And he says, "Yeah, what are you going to do?" And she says, "I didn't know I had to do anything." He says, "Those three dogs are not sleeping with us." And <laughs> they hadn't even talked about it. Yeah, you know, see that that's assumption, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. When you assume things. <laughs> <clears throat> Pastor Leo called it the lowest form of knowledge because you're just making it all up in your own head, right? right? So when, when you assign motives to what people are doing, you're making it up. You're not doing anything based on fact. You don't really have any firsthand information. It's just, well, I know why they did that or why they said that or whatever. It's just because that's how you made it, you just made it up. Yeah. But premarital counseling is so important because it gives an outsider an opportunity to bring up things that you may or may not have even thought about, let alone talked about. And, you know, sometimes it's those little things. It's the little foxes that spoil the vine, right? So sometimes it's, it's not the big things, it's the little things that you don't talk about that get in the way. So... <clears throat> okay apples and oranges we already talked about that it's it's not right and wrong it's different mm -hmm. and i think even pastor leo taught that life and death is more important than right, right. or wrong right 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 absolutely some people it's more important to be right than to keep a relationship intact. Now, yeah. and you know, for my benefit, trying to avoid conflict was one way to try to keep the relationship okay. But it also but it hurt me. It also brings into <coughs> the relationship, as Renee was saying, balance. Right. So yeah, that that's a good word. Yes. Balance is what Has is. To be. I mean, that's really the ultimate goal, mm -hmm. right? Give a little, take a little, you know. You, you, grace is overlooking a lot of stuff. Mercy is not being critical of a bunch of stuff, mm -hmm. right? I mean, that's that's God's heart, you know. It's God is not on His throne with a fly swatter or a sledgehammer waiting for you to mess up and then go whack, <laughs> you know. He's on His throne waiting to pick you up and hug on you when when you mess up. So. One of those big things about this particular lesson is it's just different, mm -hmm. you know? People are different. And that's, you know, if we start looking at everybody as being created in the image of God, you know, one of those things Satan does in his lies is to try to get us to be afraid of things that are different okay. so that we don't appreciate them as being created by God, you know, different people from different countries, you know, different colors, different races, all this kind of stuff. It's just part of God's creativity. But when you realize that fact mm -hmm. and the joy of beginning again is now we have a new relationship, a new family, and um, we're going to do it all God's way, but that's when we're going to make what is our new normal going to be? Not what your normal is and mine. Yeah. What is ours? What, what, take the best of what you remember and the best of what they remember and make a new hour, make new traditions and, mm -hmm. that you guys wanted to do. Right. And that can be the exciting part of putting a new relationship. Yeah, together. exactly. That's, and, that, and that's what I was saying a little bit ago. Take the time to talk about the differences, mm -hmm. right? So that you can kind of find out, oh, well, okay, uh, your way is actually a little better than mine. So let's do it your way. But ultimately, the goal is to be more Christ-like. Okay, so yeah, you take some of yours, 
But, and like you're saying, the beauty of marriage is you, you have this time together to figure all this stuff out. Sure. But if, if right off the bat, it's like, it's my way or the highway. Yeah, and I'm the guy I can truck at the money. Yeah, Here, or that, or, <laughs> or whatever else, yeah. you know, <clears throat> that's not it. And Proverbs 27, 17, iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend, mm-hmm. right? We're supposed to speak truth and love. Right. Now, sometimes when iron strikes iron, sparks fly. <laughs> so you can start a fire doing this. Mm-hmm. But when you're operating out of the Holy Spirit, you're talking truth and love. You're not trying to start a fight. You're just, <laughs> you put your Jesus glasses on, right? <laughs> really think about <coughs> what you're saying. <laughs> So, yeah, it's, you know, if, if you're operating out of the Holy Spirit, you're using grace, mercy, you're seeking truth, right? It's not, well, I don't like what you said, so I'm out of here. You know, that, there's no grace or mercy in there. It's really kind of disrespectful. But the best marriages are the ones where spouses learn how to have productive discussions rather than just having arguments right keep focused on the issue don't let it get personal right one of the examples we were given is here's the issue okay we're going to talk about that but what usually happens (laughs) okay we're going to talk about this there's You know, I like black coffee. I don't like cream in my coffee. And then the next thing I hear, your mama wears army boots. It just got personal, right? It's not about that anymore. Attacking. It's about my mama, (laughs) right? So it's important to stay focused. And, you know, if you have to write it out, keep the guidelines, the rules of engagement or whatever, Mm -hmm. you know, but it's so important to stay focused on what the issue is. Don't get personal because that's the enemy trying to mess you up. That's part of the spiritual warfare. The enemy wants you to start poking at the at the bear, <laughs> right? Not what the real issue is. So it's important to stay with this, stay with the issue, define it before you get started. Make sure you understand. You both parties need to know what is the issue we're going to talk about. Right. And if you have to write it down, write it down, so and then leave it out there. So, it, oh, yeah, okay, hey, we're getting a little off track here. Let's get back to what the issue is, okay? So that's one of those things when it becomes, you know, who's normal is normal. We're talking about differences. We're not talking about right and wrong here. Right. Okay, here's the issue. Here's my opinion. Here's what I think. These are my thoughts of the issue. I'm not talking about what you think. <laughs> that's well, that's and, your turn. And this is where we also <coughs> mentioned, okay, clarify. This is what I think I just heard you say mm-hmm. about that. Right. Is that what you meant to say? Giving the other person a chance to re- restate it or whatever they have to do um, because somebody might be more intent on what they're going to say back and not really hearing what the other person is saying because they said something that triggered them and they're not even listening anymore to the rest of it they're ready to come back yeah so it can avoid a lot of conflict if you verify what i think i just heard you say is that what you really meant yeah so that when it comes to being a, having a productive discussion, you want to make sure you're owning your feelings. Right? You don't make me feel <clears throat> this way. Right. Yeah. yeah when you say that, here's how this I'm, is how I feel. Here's how I'm, I'm choosing to feel about what I'm hearing. Right. It's, don't ever say, you made me. That's the, that's the enemy getting in there to try to make you see your spouse as the enemy. Mm-hmm. Right? You want to own your feelings. You want to try not to let the feelings be too big of a deal. 
I mean, they're they're part of the deal, but don't make it the big part of the deal. <laughs> so the productive discussion is, like you said, clarifying the issue, making sure you understand what it is you're talking about. You don't want to make it personal. It's not about you making me feel upset, mad, sad, whatever. It's your choice to feel a certain way. Yeah. It's, it's your choice. You're in control here, right? So don't ever accuse anybody of making you feel a certain way because it's just not true. <clears throat> we all have those triggers that, you know, from our normal mm -hmm. that somebody said something when I was 12 that made me cry, mm -hmm. you know, and if I hear anything that's even close to that, I feel upset. I want to lash out. I want to do these things. Well, you know, at some point in your life, you need to realize, oh, yeah, my mom said something to me when I was 12 that made me cry. I need to forgive my mom for what she said back then. So that's not really much of a trigger anymore, right? But being able to have a productive discussion is clarifying the issue, defining the issue, making sure you're owning you're your end of the conversation. Right. Here's how I feel when I hear these things said or done or whatever. And the other person is, okay, here's what I'm hearing you say. Is that really what you were in, intending to say? So, so if I'm hearing you correctly, okay, well, in that case, now that I understand what you're trying to tell me, here's what I can do. But just like you said, most people don't do that. I'm they're ready to they're out. waiting for your lips to stop moving yeah, so they can right. pounce on you. Get that in. Because we've been here before we've had this discussion before we've had this argument before i know where it goes mm -hmm. you're gonna say this i'm gonna say that Assuming boom already know it. yeah right but you're not listening to hear anything mm -hmm. you're just waiting to respond because that's what you've always done did you want to say something oh i i was just thinking what well, here just so you can so others can hear you. Uh, I was just thinking that kind of the, the big thing that we're working on is um, letting each other take turns talking and mm -hmm. actually hearing what each other is That's saying. That's awesome. Yeah. Yes. So that, that was just it. It just kind of yeah. rang a bell. That's um, awesome. That some that some people use a wooden that. spoon. <laughs> Whoever has a spoon gets to talk. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's especially me. I have to work on. So that's awesome. Very good. Yeah, good point. So, okay, in marriage, it's very, very important to realize how much power the tongue has. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, one of those things that we were taught in the beginning was that you need to speak life mm -hmm. into something right because basically our marriage had died yeah. and we needed to do a Lazarus come out kind of thing right. <laughs> uh, you know we had to speak life mm -hmm. into something that had died so that it could be resurrected right. through the Word of God mm -hmm. right so Ephesians 4 29 that was always one of those big ones for me let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth now, if you're a Christian, this is pretty much a command, yeah. Yeah. Right? right? And in order to be able to do that, you have to be working through the Holy Spirit because your flesh is not going to want to do that. Your flesh is going to be the opposite of that. <laughs> you're going to, you know, cuss words and just negative and very emotional negative. And, you know, yeah, you're going to be throwing punches with your words. So let no corrupt communications proceed out of your mouth. And I think the, the rest of that <coughs> has something to do with that it needs to edify those that hear it. Yeah. Right. And I keep thinking of like, you know, the kids in the Toys R Us 
you know, they're in the aisle and they're throwing a tantrum on the floor because they're not getting whatever toy it is they want. And then mom or dad or whoever is like chewing them out and you're, oh, I'm going to do this or do that. And blah, blah, blah. But you're in the next aisle over. <laughs> they don't see you, but you hear what they're saying mm -hmm. and it's sure not edifying. Right. <laughs> right. So that, that's kind of the picture I get when I hear that one is those kind of situations. Yeah. <clears throat> this is such an amazing class. Uh, Dr. Larry, um, as you were saying earlier about the emotional side, uh, when we get emotional uh, with what we think we've heard, you know, emotionally, and I'm only talking about my whole experience. So uh, that's where the battle begins, is in the emotions. Mm -hmm. Of course. You know, yeah. So the, the battle begins is in the emotions, and when we give way to the enemy, the adversary, the devil, he comes in like a flood, <laughs> press down, shake it together, and run it over. <laughs> but yeah. I don't believe that's what Luke six thirty eight really meant. <laughs> but the enemy comes in like a flood and have us operating in the flesh mm -hmm. in our emotions. Mm -hmm. And I've been there. You know, we all have. I have, and I've had to repent <laughs> a million times, but thank God for His grace. So as oh, you're yeah. teaching, that's you know I, I'm just reflecting on my life. Nobody in this room. <laughs> I'm not looking at this couple. I'm not even looking at my husband. But this is such an amazing class, and what you're talking about right now is where a lot of couples they live their marriage in the emotional realm. Or what oh, they yeah. think they've yeah. heard. Right. And so we, we respond to what we believe, mm -hmm. what we've heard, and how it made us feel, right. me mm -hmm. feel. Right. Mm -hmm. So and that's where we really need, really need uh, to become submissive unto God to help us work. That's yeah. where the battle of the, of the marriage begins. Yeah. yeah. And that, that was so real for me and, and mm -hmm. Carol, too, I, I would assume. In those early days of being fixed, uh, you know, we literally went through four months of hell mm -hmm. because we had never even considered spiritual warfare before. Yeah. And now we're giving our lives to Christ and Satan's like, hey, wait a minute here. You were in my pocket. Mm -hmm. Where do you think you're going? Yeah. Right. And he was doing everything he could possibly do to tear us apart. Right. But it was because we were hurt and the nerves were raw. You know, the emotions were raw right then. But it also says take every thought captive. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. where it starts in the thinking. Mm -hmm. If you're not thinking about what you're thinking about. Then that brain just goes wild. You know, yeah. it could. So, you know, like you were saying, it's the thoughts that tend to drive the emotions. And if the emotions are in control, you're not. Yeah. Right? Absolutely. And neither is the Holy Spirit. <laughs> that's where my Jesus glasses came in because that's oh, yeah. what I had to do. Yeah. Because I was so aggressive for 23 years. You let me call all the shots and then all of a sudden... You had a voice, and I. Yeah. Oh, where did that come from? Yeah. Uh. Uh. I'm. I'm still in charge here. Yeah. And we really had had issues over that, and I um, got these Jesus glasses out. <laughs> it was recommended to me to think before you speak. What would Jesus say, and what would Jesus do? And I thought it was really funny when I first heard it, until I got the pair. And put them on, and I couldn't believe how humbling it mm -hmm. was for me having those on. Uh, whoa. Wow. I mean, it brought me from here yeah. way down to here. Uh, and you just kind of rang a bell in my head. Next week, we're talking about the mantle. Oh, yes. Mm. That, was, that was the one. And that's where we really struggled was yeah. I gave her my mantle when we got married. And now I'm learning, oh, I'm the one that's supposed to wear it, mm. right? So how do I get it back yeah. <laughs> after that long? Yeah. 
right? She was more than comfortable wearing it. Oh, yeah. But as we'll talk next week, you know, it was meant for me to wear. It doesn't look right on her. That's it's way good. too big. That's good. You know, so, yeah, that's next week. But, <laughs> and that was, it's like, you know, yeah. I kept getting Where this one. Where did that voice come from? <clears throat> Who gave you a mouth? <clears throat> so, there's all these things, you know. God has a way of doing this. And when we do it his way, it works pretty good, yeah. you know. Uh, like in the beginning, you, I like to like draw a box, and it's like when God's word puts a, a boundary around things, everything inside the box is okay. It's when you try to get outside the box, you start having problems, mm -hmm. right? You stick your toe over the line. It may not get cut off, but there will be consequences. Mm -hmm. You might get a toe fungus, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> something minor, but there's a consequence. You know, there's freedom inside the box. There's consequences outside the box. And, you know, it's just a matter of learning, okay, where's the boundaries, yeah. right? <clears throat> so let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. We should be speaking life into our marriage. We should be edifying our spouse. Covering. Husband should be covering the spouse, the family. You know, that's part of his prophet, priest, and king job. Amen. Uh, prophet speaks the word. Priest provides the covering. And the king is the main one that's responsible and accountable to God for the government. Mm -hmm. All right. Queen is number two in the in the kingdom. Still a lot of power. But God doesn't necessarily hold her accountable. Responsible, yeah. Accountable, not so much. Because the husband's supposed to do that. Right? Now, we most of the people that we've ever counseled did not do that. Somebody was always putting the other one down. Right. Right? No. We even did it ourselves. Well, yeah, we, sure, everybody does. Yeah. But we some do it. Know. Some do it more than others. We didn't know. Well, yeah, we didn't. Now we did a lot of things right by accident. Yeah, we you know, we weren't followers of the word, but we got it as children, and so some of it was in there. And we did some things right, sort of, just by luck, right? We realized we were doing it the right way once we started being a Christian. It's like, oh, yeah, we were, okay, we were doing that. But, uh, you, you know, <clears throat> part of what we're talking about is uh, boundaries. Uh, we start, you know, we're kind of working our way down the, the pyramid here. We, you know, we got God first, we got the marriage second, kids are next. Now we're talking about in-laws and outlaws. There are needs for boundaries, especially we're talking about differences here. Who's normal is normal. Our in-laws... Right? When you marry, you don't just marry your spouse, you get the whole family. And part of blending is how do you manage all these external relationships? <clears throat> so, you know, your marriage comes before the external relationships. You have to protect it. It comes first. <clears throat> Family's family, right? But most of us have some crazy Uncle Harry out there that you don't necessarily want to be best friends with. So you, you pray for them across the street, right? <laughs> Boundaries. Uh, <clears throat> now, if there are major cultural differences, uh, you know, even with your ex. I mean, your side of the family didn't get along with his side of the family that well, right? Right. I mean, they never really were that close anyway, but they never desired to be very close. No. All right. Uh, when my mom remarried, his family, he, well, he in particular, really had no interest in anybody else. Right. <clears throat> Let he alone. didn't want anything to do with us here. Not so much us, but especially your kids, because right. they were your kids, not yeah. our kids. Not blood-related, so it's not a blended family. So it, it's not your family. Your kids had no meaning to him. Right. 
So, you know, there's all those kind of things with external family members, in-laws, outlaws, and so forth. But it's important to make sure you're managing your marriage first before you start allowing all the in-laws, siblings, co-workers, you know, all these other outside relationships <clears throat> to have influence over your marriage. So it's important to make sure God's first, your personal vertical with God, and then you and your spouse. Mm -hmm. And then everybody else after that. So keep it Christ-centered. Build your own normal from the best of each of your normals. Right. You know, like Carol's, Carol likes to say, a new our normal. That's right. But that our normal needs to be somewhat Christ-like. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. if you want your marriage to work. And you both need to be in agreement on it. Well, and, and that's a big point of... The whole pyramid thing is, you know, you're getting closer to God. I'm getting closer to God. Hey, we're getting closer together. Look at that. Who to thunk, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> but when you're both becoming more like Jesus, it, it gets pretty good. Because now you're speaking life. You're edifying one another. You're not criticizing. You're exercising grace and mercy and kindness and all these, you know, Holy Spirit kind of things. <clears throat> So keep it Christ-centered, build your own normal from the best of your normals. Again, it's not who's right and who's wrong, it's who's better, you know, who's more Christ-like. And so the Christ-like normal should be the goal for the new our normal. Um, be quick to forgive, okay? Develop an attitude like that of Christ on the cross. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's the first thing that should pop into your head. When something doesn't go quite right, the first thing that really should pop into your head is, okay, let's just say spouse. My spouse is being used as a tool. He's not the enemy. Father, forgive them, for they know not what they're doing. And then let that go. And then now you can get into the productive discussion. Because now it's not so emotional. Right? That gets rid of the emotional baggage that triggers the pain of whatever happened in the past that drives the emotions today. It's like, well, okay, it, my spouse just got used as a tool against me, but they didn't understand what was going on. I'm going to forgive them. And now we can, you know, hey, when this happens, well, that thing you just did, here's here's how I feel when that happens. But it also is <clears throat> an opportunity to say, okay, God, you revealed this to me. What am I supposed to learn from this? Mm. You're bringing this as an issue to me. <clears throat> Why? Yeah. And get along with God and find out why is this coming up? Why is this being put in front of me? Why why do I get triggered when this happens? That's I mean that's a question you need to figure out because Satan always uses the triggers to drive you into the emotional right. upheaval. That's real good. To get you into an argument. Mm -hmm. So that your spouse appears to be the enemy. Right? That's his modus operandi, right? I'm going to use one or both of you as a tool against the other one so that you think you're each other's enemy, and then I'll go mess with somebody else. That's spiritual warfare. Mm -hmm. Satan's not everywhere all the time like God is. He's one entity, mm -hmm. and he can only be in a certain place at a certain time. But he's got a big army, yes, right? <clears throat> a third of the angels, right? Or on his end. <laughs> but we got two to one. So we're good. <laughs> we win. Um, but yeah. When when the very first thing that pops into your head is, oh, I need to forgive him for that. That drops the temperature way down. In the emotional end of things. So that you can have a productive discussion. <clears throat> about the issue. <laughs> and not all this personal... Well, you always, or you never, you know, those kind of things. 
that we like to say, well, you always, you know, I heard that a few times. We'd get into a discussion, and then it would turn into a... Because I knew what you were going to say. Right? I assumed. <laughs> yeah. It's like, we well, you're just going to do this anyway, so why should I be here? Yeah. You know? <laughs> that was... Uh, I, I think it's in the premarital. I don't think the diagram is in this, this class, but you know, that whole little diagram, like oh, a graph. Okay. Conflict resolution. The conflict resolution yeah. thing. Yeah. You know... I was up in this corner where it was the avoid. Carol had the tendency to either be down here in the withdraw or over on the other one at the bottom of the win. Winner, yeah. Now, Jesus was up here. <laughs> yeah. So we were hardly ever over here. Yeah, I wasn't even paying attention. <laughs> no, that, we didn't ever go there. It was either I'm avoiding it or if I did say something, we would fight till she won and I, and I gave up. Because I'd, I'd get back up into the avoid yeah. quickly because it, it wasn't worth it, right? Or I felt like I could win this one, and she would just get up in the middle of a thing and walk off. Yeah. <laughs> so talk to the hand. To the hand. <laughs> <clears throat> so that was us. Yeah. And uh, we did that. We did it. Yeah, that was part of the four months of hell, yeah. right? I would. I was trying to become the leader that I should have been all those years. And it's like, you know, yeah. I get the hands on the hip kind yeah. of thing. Where do you come from? <laughs> where, where do you think you're going? Yeah. What, what do you think you're doing? Mm -hmm. You know? And so it was part of the battle. We had to kind of figure some of this stuff out. But fortunately, we had some really good counselors that loved us and prayed for us. And you can do this. You know, <laughs> they were speaking life into us when we worked. So... <clears throat> um, now, just kind of wrapping things up here. Be a peacemaker, not necessarily a peacekeeper. I was a peacekeeper. That's the avoider. You're just keeping the peace because you're not having an opinion. You're not speaking truth necessarily. You're you're doing whatever you can to avoid the conflict. That's a peacekeeper. A peacemaker is somebody that is up in that other, that upper right quadrant who's speaking truth and love like Jesus would and dealing with the issue without causing suffering in the relationship. You know, the, the avoider tries to keep the relationship in good standing, but it never fixes anything. The winner is fixing the problem, but at the expense of the relationship. Mm -hmm. The withdrawer is the worst one. <laughs> it's negative on both counts. It doesn't help the relationship because it's disrespectful, mm -hmm. and it doesn't help solve the problem. Right? So it's, it's at the expense of the relationship, and it doesn't fix anything. It's just, I'm not going to deal with you. I'm out of here. Right. It's all about me. And how I feel, and I'm not going to talk to you. And uh, hey, Danny, come on in. We're just kind of wrapping things up. Uh, but be a peacemaker, not a peacekeeper. James 3:18. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace of them that make peace. So. Uh, he had surgery just called. Look at him. Oh yeah, walking around. God really blessed me the first day. You know? Yeah, hardly even limping. Didn't even notice it. But. Okay, so it's said of those that make peace, right? So again, it's not about keeping peace. You know, in the middle of that graph was a circle, and that was, to me, that's like, you know, the Middle East peace treaty. Nothing ever got solved, but both sides are just waiting for the other one to start shooting again. They're not shooting today, maybe not tomorrow, but probably next week, somebody's going to shoot again, right? So it's just a, nothing got resolved. It, it's, it's just right there in the center of everything, and it's just nothing. It, it's a compromise. You know, nobody got what they wanted. Nothing really got resolved. You know, it's just right there in the bullseye, and nothing changes. So, but those that actually make peace are those that will see the fruit of righteousness. Now, we, we got a glimpse of that 
there were several Mideast countries that were signing peace treaties and different things. So we'll, we'll see what happens nowadays, but, uh, you know, you, you kind of get the feeling of it was the right thing to do. So it was, it was righteous, right? When these companies were realizing, oh, you know, hey, maybe if, if we start doing business together, we both benefit, and now we're not shooting each other. Who would have figured that, right? You know, but again, th those things have been there for thousands of years, right? I mean, it's not like something that just started. I mean, it's, it's uh, Ishmael and Isaac, right? I mean, it goes back to there. Uh, so <laughs> it's been there for thousands of years. But anyway, try to be the one who's speaking truth and love. You're speaking through grace and mercy. You're speaking truth. You're speaking about the issue. You're not getting personal about things. You know, it's not how you make me feel. That's a lie. Here's how I choose to feel about that. And this is what our new normals are going to be yeah. in our home. And, you know, sometimes you need to, like, kind of write some of this stuff down, right? And you write down, here's what I think it should be, here's what I think it should be, what's the better ones of those? Compromise. What, which ones of these are more like Jesus? You know, that's really that's the question. The ultimate goal. Yeah. yeah. You know, ask yourself that question. Which, here's here's kind of my vision of how things should be, and here's how, here's mine. Okay, well, they don't always line up, but which ones of these are more like Christ? Let's do those. Let's let's start with those, and then see what happens. You know, you can't change everything all at once, you know, but pick a few things, make those things a little more like Jesus, and then God will start moving in other areas. So, all right, I believe that is everything I had, yep. So, any, any other comments, questions? This makes sense? Yeah. <laughs> Danny, it's one of my favorites. Do you have anything you want to add that you might have learned over the years with the ministry that has helped you and your spouse blend and uh, celebrate the differences better? Well, you know. <laughs> it's going to be official now. Is it on? It's on. It's on. I don't, well, you know, I think that if you've come out of a really toxic first relationship, uh, that you have to kind of relearn things. Because now you're looking for the dark, seedy part of everything because you've been damaged. And reading and renewing your mind in Christ and the Word of God can help because it makes you think differently. But it's also the enemy comes up and you have to stand together on a lot of issues, or most issues, if not all, because you're no match for the enemy. Mm -hmm. But my walk is, my walk alone has been a word called loyalty this year. As soon as I said loyalty, and God put that in my spirit, you know, you're loyal to your wife, you're loyal to this, you're loyal to that. He said, are you loyal to me? Mm -hmm. I'm like getting persecution like I've ever seen before. <laughs> I mean, I can't make friends with a stray dog, but I'm trying to fight people. So, it's, uh, you know, I would recommend this class to anybody. It just yeah, works. It's a great class. It's, saved, it's really saved me. So, yeah, that's pretty much off the top of my head. Awesome. Yeah. So you're even struggling with making friends with stray dogs now. Yeah, I mean, you know, well, if you're in Christ in this day and time, I mean, you know, you, you expect that, but you expect maturity out of the persecutions and 
peace of mind through God alone um, and your strength is in the Lord right and you know that's what I just you know, I mean this class alone you just learn way too many things anyway <laughs> and it's like they come to you in pieces right out in your spirit Holy Spirit brings a lot of this up because it's scripture right right we try to base it on scripture. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thanks, Danny. Yeah. Uh, good to see you. Uh, just wrapping things up. The uh, our our website is blendedfamiliesministry.org. dot uh, org. Anybody so inclined to make a little donation can do it on there. Uh, we do have a premarital seminar coming up next month. Uh, the class schedule is out there on the website. We posted it on the Facebook page, pages, and uh, so we have uh, a couple more of these that we're going to do this year, as well as some premarital things. Uh, still trying to get some folks to the Beyond Divorce class. That'll be t Tuesday in this room at 6 p.m. And uh, I guess that's it. So we'll see you all next week. Thanks for watching online if you did. And uh, obviously the, the video will be out there for a while. And again, those of you at home in your comfy home. In your PJs. Yeah. Can you get dressed one of these few weeks and come <laughs> in and help us here? Uh, somebody maybe needs to hear what you've got to say to, to help somebody that's listening. So we hope to see you soon. Thank yeah. you.